Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today we're gonna talk about <coughs> ladies and gentlemen. Today we're gonna talk about front end fatigue. Now, what the heck is front end fatigue? You might ask. Fatigue means extreme tiredness resulting from mental and physical exertion uh, or illness. Basically, in nutshell, you're sick and tired of front end. Well, basically, working front end. And that's a front end fatigue. Now, I know some of you are already tired. I can see in your face right there. So, you know what I'm talking about. And you know, there are uh, JavaScript libraries like a detox and a nightmare, and they are trying to warn you, but you don't listen. Uh, let's say why a front end area is so crazy. What causes the stress that you are having? Um, what should you focus on learning next and oral how to make some changes in your career decision so that uh, you can have some uh, long-term stability and welcome to Texas tutorials All right, so let's talk about before the time, way, way before the time. Uh, when I came out of college, um, I started with C++. I, you know, I, I learned actually Pascal and uh, I believe Fortran in those days. I, I'm way older than I, I look, but that's not the point. The point is in those days, you know, when you start with C++ or Java, uh, you're working on a project and you can work on for like, you know, five, six years without much change in C++ and in Java. And that is because in in those days, I think the web was just coming out um, or it had came, it had came out, but there was no front end because there was no JavaScript. Web pages were simple HTML pages, right? So there was not even a feel of front end like today, but nowadays, the front end, which is now here, and it's just growing crazily. It's a crazy town out there, right? Things are changing faster than we can imagine. New versions, updates, fixes, weird problems happening from NPM, and uh, one package depends on another package, which is not maintained correctly. And uh, you now you have to update it or make a decision, what should I use and why am I using this? And somebody t telling you this is a bad choice that you made and all that stuff, right? If you don't learn new things, you will be irrelevant in the market within one year. I am ex I'm not even exaggerating. One year is still a long time. Uh, if, you, if you go in a coma and you wake up and you still know what you knew before you went to coma, your skills are irrelevant, okay? That's, that's what I'm talking about. And that causes you a lot of stress. So let's first look at um, the the word the how the development cycle works in most of the front end um, frameworks, right? Let's take a look at Angular. In March of 2017, Angular 4 came out. When it, when a version comes out, it's it's still not uh, supported, but people start moving towards that version, right? In around September timeframe, it became LTS version. LTS means long term support version, which means you can use it in a production environment. Um, and it's safe to do, do that because they will support it, right? Within one year, uh, 2018 September, that version is no longer supported, okay? Within one year, it comes out and it's no longer supported within one year. Now imagine in around the October, November timeframe of 2017, you are building a new product and you, you made a decision to go with Angular and you made a decision because now you have an LTS version 4, so you're gonna go with the 4, and uh, let's say it, it took you 10 months to develop this product, which is quite normal if it's a large, uh, large project, right? By the time you have a stable version of your product, the framework that you were using, it's no longer supported, and it's actually two versions behind. There is an LTS support for uh, Angular 6 already out there, and Angular 7 regular version is all, uh, already out there, which will have an LTS version soon. And most of us know that you have to upgrade. If you, if you wait for too long, uh, you cannot really upgrade to two or three version in a row. You have to do 
you know, one version at a time so you can control the situation. It's like changing the tire on, uh, on your car while the car is running. Okay, it's that crazy, right? Because it, your, the changes that happens could impact the entire project or every single file in a lot of cases. Uh, some people say, hey, use React instead of Angular. Well, it's a, it has the same issues, right? A React is a little bit better, but still, you know, it is a crazy town out there. So what, what are the problems that occurs uh, due to this, this crazy, crazy changes? Well, one of the problem is, uh, let's say you were working in a project for a few years, you know, it became a maintenance and all that stuff. Like, uh, uh, let's say you were working on Angular 1 uh, four years ago, which is a norm, which was very famous at the time. And, you know, you were in supporting for the last three years and now you lost your job. You come out of the market and suddenly you're completely ir irrelevant. The 20 year old kid who just came out of the school has more knowledge than you do and he's competing for the same job that you're applying for, okay? And he knows b way better because he has learned all the new technology. Uh, because he went to the boot camp, remember, the boot camp. <laughs> yeah, so, so it is important to learn while, you know, no matter what it is, uh, you have to constantly learn and that causes a lot of stress because, you know, most of us have families and, you know, kids and, other things going on in our life, right? And learning becomes very difficult while you do that. You already have a lot of pressure at work and then you have to learn something new and it becomes quite, so that causes a lot of stress. Now let's look at the framework war. Uh, so there is a, a giant war out there uh, among uh, React, Angular, Ember, Vue, whatever you call it, right? Uh, they are all moving faster than speed of light. And they are popping out versions like never before and they don't give you know what about you uh, and how your life is going to impact they're just going to do because they have to compete with each other right uh, if they slow down uh, and not adapt uh, they will be irrelevant okay uh, so they're doing it and uh, and you're the victim of uh, what's uh, what's happening out there uh, one one of my um, one of my good friends said okay you should learn view.js it's really cool and all that stuff right I said, heck no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna even touch that, uh, because no matter how cool it is, I already know M Ember, I know Angular, I know React, I don't want to learn another uh, framework because, uh, you know, if I'm not gonna use it, it's why bother? I should, I should, I should focus on things that I'm gonna, I'm gonna use. So I started looking out and, and to to see things to learn, right? So I started reviewing. Okay, what should I learn next? Okay, where should I go? Uh, just for fun and you know for the feature as well so I looked at uh, tensorflow you know uh, it's it's cool AI thing uh, blockchain is pretty cool um, uh, big data you know there are lots of other options and I felt okay yeah I can go there it may be cool to learn am I gonna work in that field right away um, probably not I can I can re easily easily move to that field right so, so I decided to, uh, I decided on a bit more cautious approach. So what I, what I thought was, um, instead of going completely different space, uh, let's stick with something iterated to JavaScript, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn Node, which I already started, um, GraphQL, which is closer uh, to what I'm learning, and uh, React Native. Uh, because I, I know everything is moving towards mobile anyway, so uh, maybe this th three would help me. And also, if you do, if you do Node or GraphQL, uh, you can actually move at your same work uh, place. You can actually transition uh, uh, to a different job or um, ask somebody for you know uh, some backend work or something right where you can grow. Because if you if you change your field completely and go out and look for the job. Um, they're not going to give it to you because you or if they give it to you, you, you might start at the lower level because you don't have experience in that field, right? So start with a transition at your work uh, if you want to gain some experience. So you can put it in your resume. And I, as, as, as an option to move from front end to something else uh, with an ease, I think mobile development could be one of them because mobile 
uh, if you go with the React Native or Native Script or uh, Flutter, or whatever, it's closer to the, the front end, so it will be easier for you. You can move to Node, Node.js, which is much easier uh, if you know JavaScript already. Um, uh, you can move to management, okay? Um, another field uh, to move on because, you know, hey, uh, there's some time you have to grow, right? Uh, or you can become a designer. If you already want work in a front end field, you already are um, designing something, you, you have that mindset already that built up. So you could go on a designer. Um, but ultimately, no matter what you do, uh, remember, keep learning. That would, that would definitely help, uh, at least in this environment. If you stop learning, you will be irrelevant. All right, so now it's your turn. Uh, let me know why, what field you are moving into because um, I want to know where people are going nowadays or are they sticking with the front end? And if, they, if so, then what are they, what are they, uh, they learning in that field, right? Um, so let me know. And uh, if you want to know more about learning and all that stuff, I have a bunch of videos on learning. It will motivate you to learn new things and stuff. Uh, I will provide a, a link here or there, whatever. Uh, so you can, you can, you can go and uh, check them out. And I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please like, subscribe. And don't forget to like, <laughs> it's just a one click, right? Like, subscribe, um, and provide a nice comment and uh, click on the bell icon so that um, you can get the updates uh, new of my new videos. And uh, you can translate this video for me. Uh, to your native language it's pretty easy i will provide a link in the description on how to do it and if you do that let me know so i can actually give you a credit um in the description so you know uh, i want to acknowledge your your contribution as well or you can uh, support me on patreon i'll provide a link here and thank you and keep learning